News at noon starts right now. A fractured skull, bruises and broken bones, all part of the suffering a three-year-old boy endured. Bear County Sheriff's investigators believe his own mother and her boyfriend are to blame. They've arrested the couple on charges of injury to a child, but as Katrina Weber tells us, they also could face charges in another Texas county. This couple had their heads hung low as deputies walked them past reporters last night. But Bear County Sheriff says what they did was even lower. Look, I can tell you right now, this case is, is infuriating and sad. 25-year-old Justin Garcia and his 24-year-old girlfriend, Brandy Laurel, are accused of repeatedly causing serious injuries to Laurel's three-year-old son, including a fractured skull. Hemorrhage, scalp swelling, bruising of a right temple, uh, part of which resembled a footprint on the side of the, of the child's face. Sheriff Salazar says those are just some of the reasons why they brought the toddler to a hospital earlier this month. Child Protective Services then banned them from being near him without supervision. But Salazar says they violated that, then showed up at a hospital in Dimmitt County earlier this week. This time, the three-year-old had two broken legs. The arrest affidavit says doctors suspect he was hurt when someone did a wrestling move on him. That's the only thing they could think of that would create enough torque and enough force to cause two breaks in each leg. While the suspects were booked into jail here last night, they could face charges in Dimmitt County. Sheriff Salazar says a separate child abuse investigation is underway there. The sheriff says, unlike Garcia and Laurel, the child was not able to walk as a result of his leg injuries. To fix that, he says, the toddler had to undergo major surgery. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. This Memorial Day weekend, it is time to honor those who served and paid the ultimate price. The San Antonio Police Department paying tribute to its fallen police officers. Garrett Berger live at the Police Training Academy where that ceremony just wrapped up. Here at Memorial Plaza at the Academy, a black granite monument carries the stone carved names of fallen officers. The flags today are at half staff showing that the grief and respect for these officers continues on years later. Families of the fallen officers were given central seating this morning with yellow roses in hand to lay at the feet of the monument. The ceremony paid special recognition to officer David Evans, who was hit multiple times in a 2003 shooting at a restaurant. He finished another five years with SAPD and several more with Northside ISD after the shooting but at complications from his old injuries claimed his life in February 2022. His widow pinned his name to the department's memorial flag, the 62nd ribbon to adorn it. I'm proud of him. I'm proud of what he did. I'm proud of the man he was with the uniform and outside the uniform. He loved his family and he loved pe people and he's so deserving of this honor. Here we go. Former city councilman Judge William Cruz Shaw was the keynote speaker. He recalled his own connection to a fallen officer, Miguel Moreno, who was shot and killed in 2017. Shaw had a short stint teaching at Lanier High School, which overlapped with Moreno's time there as a student. Now here at the monument, you can see that there is still space. The top half is filled with names and begun on the second row. But there is space for names that may come in the future, but the department hopes never will. Live at the Training Academy, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Garrett. It could be a record-breaking weekend at the San Antonio International Airport. Air travelers could make it the busiest Memorial Day weekend in its history. Starting yesterday and through Monday, Airport Director Jesus Sainz says they expect nearly 187,000 travelers. In November of 2022, we actually matched 2019 numbers, but uh, 2023 will be our first year where we really begin to uh, see some of this rebound that we've been expecting. Meanwhile, the TSA says yesterday nationwide, the agency processed the highest number of air travelers since Thanksgiving of 2019, more than 2.6 million people. It was the busiest air travel day since the pandemic, and today is expected to be even busier. But 
why would you ever want to leave this? Okay. It's such a pretty day out there and a pretty nice Memorial Day weekend in store for us. Yeah, all things considered, it's going to be a little warm out there. Not too bad, close to the seasonal average or maybe just a few degrees below it into the afternoons. Pretty isolated chances for rain by Sunday, but on Monday, while it's not going to be a washout, some widely scattered storms will be possible as we see a little disturbance pushed across the Lone Star State. So some hit or miss storms not out of the question for your Memorial Day. Let's get you a look at those current conditions outside. Have some sunshine out there as well as a few clouds. Temperatures currently in the low 80s here in San Antonio. 80 over at SA International as well as Kelly and Randolph over there on the east side of Bear County. Stinson checking in at 81 degrees this lunchtime hour. Into this afternoon, daytime highs climbing into the upper 80s here in San Antonio. We've got that forecast high pointed around 87 in town. And then if you're stepping out later this evening, temperatures falling into the mid 80s by dinner time and then into the low 80s and eventually the upper 70s after the sun goes down winds out of the east southeast at about 5 to 10 miles per hour for your Saturday upper 60s in the morning. Once again, temperatures climbing into the upper 80s here in San Antonio, partly cloudy skies as early as tomorrow evening. A couple of isolated showers not completely ruled out across our far western counties into Sunday. We're going to introduce a 20% chance for a few isolated showers should be very few and far between, but on Monday, that's when that 40% chance for some widely scattered activity moves back into the forecast. It's not going to be for everybody, but a plan B to maybe briefly bring th some activities inside. Not a bad idea. So we'll get you a look at the future cast and get you all the details for your Memorial Day weekend coming up in just a few guys. Thank you so much, Mia. Appreciate it. Police searching for a missing child and her brother, both apparently the victims of an abduction. Zyla Fox is two years old, has brown hair, or rather brown eyes, black hair, and they're also searching for nine-year-old Camille Brown Sykes, who has black hair and brown eyes as well. Police are also looking for 29-year-old Julio Nahar Trevino in connection with the adoption of these children. The suspect is driving a gray 2008 Saturn Aura with Texas license plate number SWS6018. You can call the San Antonio Police Department if you have any information. A San Antonio man has found himself on the list of the 10 most wanted fugitives in the state. This is 44-year-old Stephen Clay Livesti. Several warrants for his arrest have been issued over the past two years. Those include sexual assault of a child and failure to stop and render aid, resulting in death. Livesti is about 5'11", has tattoos on his back and left shoulder. If you know anything that can help find him, you're asked to call the Crime Stoppers hotline at 1-800-252-TIPS. Information that leads to him could get you a cash reward. A 75-year-old woman killed after being hit by a driver while crossing the street on the south side of town. It happened around 9.15 last night on Pleasanton Road near South Cross. Police say the woman and a teen were crossing the street when a driver hit the woman in the road. We're told she died at the scene. The teen was not hurt. The driver did pull over to help and is not facing any charges. The state's top law enforcement officer has faced many legal battles over the years in office, but now... Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton is facing expulsion from his office by his own party. A Texas House committee will try him on 20 articles of impeachment. Those articles include bribery, conspiracy, and misappropriation of public resources. The state's top lawyer has been under FBI investigation for years now over accusations that he used his office to help a donor. Paxton, meantime, striking back, saying impeachment defies the will of the voters. He says the committee rejected every attempt he made to seek a full accounting of the truth. Still coming up, some good and some not so good in the high school softball playoffs. Even though Washington lawmakers are on recess, they might be called back early. That's if the White House and House Republicans actually manage to strike a deal over the nation's debt limit. That debt ceiling standoff is still going on in Washington. Both sides are reportedly inching closer to an agreement while reassuring talks have been productive, yet still no deal. ABC's M1 reports if federal assistance is halted, though, experts say people with disabilities, seniors and veterans will probably not get their checks on time. 
The White House and House Republicans scrambling to strike a deal with just six days to go until a potentially devastating U.S. default. And it's time for Congress to act now. The president reassuring Americans he's had several productive conversations with House Speaker Kevin McCarthy and that they've been making progress. They've all agreed there will be no default. But top Republican negotiators say debt ceiling talks remain difficult. These are thorny issues that have to be resolved. Republicans are demanding deep spending cuts, including budget caps and stricter work requirements for some federal programs like food stamps, which Democrats have called a non-starter. The GOP also want to increase military spending and rescind billions of dollars of COVID-19 funds, which the president said he's open to including. We know where our differences are on both sides. We just need to be able to finish those out. The Treasury Secretary again warning a default could lead to another recession, plummeting 401ks and delayed Social Security payments. Uh, without Social Security and SNAP, uh, not only would we be homeless, my goodness, we wouldn't have money to buy food. But when asked whether there was another plan in place, should the nation reach its borrowing capacity, the Done Deputy Treasury times, Secretary said this on CNN. We don't have a plan B that allows us to meet the commitments that we've made to our creditors, to our seniors, to our veterans, to the American people. Amid this Memorial Day recess, lawmakers have been told by leaders to be prepared to return to Washington immediately if a deal is struck. Speaker McCarthy insists members need at least three days to consider the final agreement. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. A lot of people at the airport would talk about how it could be a record day, but you know, a lot of people are going to San Antonio just for that reason right there. Look at that picture. Yeah, they're Ooh. coming into town yeah. for and Memorial Day weekend. And it's not a bad forecast. It's really not, except for dodging a few downpours, a couple of rumbles on Memorial Day itself on Monday. Not too shabby out there. We'll be a little warm with highs in the mid to upper 80s, both into tomorrow as well as Sunday. A quick look at the aquifer levels for this Friday. No change, still 647.5. In terms of our pollen count, molds drop ever so slightly from yesterday, but they are still elevated in the high category. Pine and grass make a return, but the good news is that they are low. Full details on that Memorial Day weekend forecast coming up after the break. So what I gather is we're good for the next couple of days, but on Monday we may have to cover up the hot dog cooker for just a minute so it doesn't get soggy. If you're doing it outside. If doing it outside. Yeah. Okay. If you're barbecuing outside. Yep, just briefly. And the big thing to know about Monday is it's not looking to be a washout kind of a day. And not everybody's going to tap into the activity, but we're going to see a little disturbance push across the state, and that could spark up just enough energy in our atmosphere to find some widely scattered showers and a couple of thunderstorms. So that's what we're going to be monitoring here as we head into the upcoming Memorial Day weekend. Here's a look at your weather headlines. Temperatures into this weekend still warm near even slightly below average at times in the mid to upper 80s each day and then rain chances pretty isolated especially on Sunday and then Monday we've got that 40% potential in the forecast into next week we're not finished with the rain chances they will be more on an isolated basis by Tuesday but they do stick with us each day through the middle to maybe even later portions of next week as well so let's talk all about it and get you the details starting off though with a look at temperatures and current conditions outside right now. We started off this morning in the 60s and 70s. Right now we're in the upper 70s and low 80s. 80 pretty much for the most part here in Bear County. Same up in Bull Verde, 78 in Canyon Lake, stretching over to Bandera. Current temperature is 79 out in Hondo there in Medina County. As we head into this afternoon, still expecting some peaks of sunshine helping those temperatures warm. We've got that forecast high around 87 degrees by the 4 to 5 5 p.m. hour here in San Antonio. A lot of graduation ceremonies happening around town and in surrounding communities later this evening. No big issues expected for those. Temperatures falling into the mid 80s by 6 p.m. and then transitioning to the low 80s by 8 to 9 p.m. And then if you're stepping out for any Friday night plans, we'll see those temperatures continue to fall into the upper 70s later tonight. But yes, yeah, still a warm day, all things considered. Forecast high around 88 in El 
Elmendorf, 87 in Floresville, 86 in Seguin, 84 over there in Lakey. We've still got this northwest flow in place. If you remember yesterday, especially just west of Bear County, we were able to see a little complex of storms survive the journey from a bigger cluster farther up to the north early yesterday morning. That was able to make its way into parts of our area yesterday afternoon before fizzling out. There is a cluster of storms north of San Angelo here this hour. That's taking more of an easterly track, though. I think most of us here in south central Texas will likely stay dry throughout the remainder of the day. But that is not the case as we head into Memorial Day specifically. Again, about a 40% potential for a few widely scattered showers and storms. Let's go ahead and time out the future cast, what we're expecting the radar to look like as we head into this weekend. You can see by tomorrow morning, most of us still quiet, and I think for the most part, Saturday is going to be a pretty dry day, except for along our far western counties by tomorrow evening. A couple of isolated showers possible into Sunday. We could see a few more showers to a couple of stray storms pop up first thing in the morning and then into Monday as that area of low pressure then moves through. You can see there on your future cast that yes, about a 40% potential for some hit or miss storms certainly possible. So we'll continue to keep eyes on that. Of course, over the next several days, KSAT Weather Authority app going to be a great resource to have to get forecast updates and of course check the radar if yes, you have any grilling plans or anything outside this weekend, guys. We will. Thank you. East Central seeing a little sting in game one of their playoff series and the Boston Celtics are staying alive. Got that for you coming up. Big weekend for high school softball. First time East Central has advanced to the UIL 6A softball regional final. They opened a three game series against San Benito in Beeville Jones. Wrong kind of buzz for the Hornets. So top of the first base is loaded. Myra Rodriguez with the shot up the middle. That brings in two runs. They ended up getting three in that inning. So the Hornets are down going into the bottom of the first. Three nothing. They respond in the bottom of the first. Is the Estrada going back up the box? That scores a run. The lead is cut to two, but the Hornets were not able to get any more. They fall 11 1 in five innings. Game two is tonight at 6 o'clock. From softball to high school baseball, regional semifinal round, Johnson Jaguars still alive in Class 6A. First game of three game series against Far San Juan Alamo in Laredo. Not a great start, bottom three. Andy Gamboa goes deep to left field, and that is a two run shot. The Bears take the lead 4 0. Still plenty of time for a comeback. We go to the bottom of five. Mason Chilcutt goes deep to left. Where is it? There's the foul pole. There's the ball just inside. So that's a solo shot. They tied it at four in that inning until the top of the sixth. The Bears add one. Johnson drops game one, five, four. They'll face elimination this afternoon at two o'clock. And in Class 5A, Bernie Champion opened a three-game series against Corpus Christi Ray with wrestling superstar Bill Goldberg in the audience. Yeah, he was some strength right there. There's a little strength. Chargers down 3-2, fly to right, dropped. That allowed two runs to come in to score. Chargers in the inning down 5-3, and Champion drops game one, 8-2. Game two today, Northeast Independent School District Sports Park at 1.30. KSS Sports will be there for that one. And in Class 2A, the Kennedy Lions faced Johnson City in game one of their three-game regional semifinal series at UIW. Both pitchers came to play. Johnson City, McQuarrie Jacobs, and Kennedy's L.J. Barrientes both struck out two batters in the first inning for a nice start, but then the Lions broke through in the top of the second. They had runners on the corners. Barrientes shows bunt. There's a check at first base. Ryland Reyna takes off a little trickery in that one. He slides in safe. Kennedy strikes first. They got a nothing, one nothing lead. Then some Johnson City defense. They turn that one five three double play to end the inning, just like practice. Johnson City takes game one four one. Series continues Saturday at four o'clock. And in Class Four A, Davenport defeated Sinton one nothing in game one. Game two also tomorrow afternoon at two in the ISD Sports Park. Day one of this year's NAIA Softball World Series is in the books, and Our Lady of the Lake had the day off. The Saints are currently making their first World Series appearance, and they are ranked number two in the nation, a ranking that ensured them a bye through the first round of the action. So now that is important, and it is a bye to get the team a little more practice, a little more experience. And what do they feel going into this first round for first time? 
I think it's really important, especially for a lot of us, or honestly, all of us, we've never been there before. We've been, the highest we've been is the regionals. So being able to go, like, you know, take it in, give, have a day to like relax and kind of just see like what we're going to get into is really huge. And it's really exciting, honestly, to um, be able to have that buy. Saints will face Marion University in Indianapolis in the second round tonight. The Knights defeated Midland 2-0 to advance. OU will take the circle at 6 o'clock. Hey, the NBA Finals still not set because the Boston Celtics keep winning. They were able to win game five and extend their season. Boston set the tone last night, jumped out to a 35-20 lead after one, and they cruised to a statement win, 110-97. to Miami still leads the series 3-2, game six tomorrow night at 7.30. And how about this? It's the, sign, it's the scenic backdrop to one of the most important and prestigious e-races in the entire world. It's the Monaco Grand Prix. The 161-mile, 78-lap Formula One event returns to Monte Carlo this weekend. Practice is taking place today and tomorrow. Race day set for Sunday, and we're going to air that live. Well, we got to get up early, though, if you want to see it live. Right here on KZ12, the pre-race show starts at 630 Sunday morning, but uh, look at that view, Monaco. Isn't that where like all the rich and famous go? It is. That's why it's I've like never the been most there. expensive place in yeah. the world to live, I think. Something like Something that. Something like that. Yeah. Well, I went there once. Looks good. I went, went to a there. casino and placed one bet. Did you win? No. So Monica got your money too. It did. <laughs> there you go. A man paralyzed in a motorbike accident more than a decade ago. Look at him. Go. What is the technology that's being used for this medical breakthrough? A reality. And new today at five, the Memorial Day holiday is the beginning of grilling season. For the perfect burgers or steaks, do you stick to your traditional fire pit or is it time to go smokeless? We're comparing different smokeless pits and what you need to know about them today at five after entertainment tonight. And we're going to be live playing a game, I guess, a hot potato. Okay. This is different, and we've got Santa and George Strait. Okay, Ted, we need an explanation. <laughs> be a wild show. An attorney says a Mississippi police officer who shot and wounded an 11-year-old boy in the child's home should be fired. Attorney Carlos Moore says Adrian Murray, who is black, was shot in the chest early Saturday in Indiola. Moore says the child's mother asked her son to call police because of an intruder in their home. Moore says after she told officers the intruder had left, an officer yelled for anyone else in the house to come out, and that's when Adirian was shot. The child returned home Wednesday after being hospitalized five days for a collapsed lung, lacerated liver, and fractured ribs. For a second time this spring, the Pope is sick. He's so sick, he's canceled his meetings. The Vatican press office will only say that it's due to a fever. Pope Francis, who is 86 years old, apparently looked well enough yesterday while participating in a live stream event featuring an international education network that he founded. This past March, Pope Francis spent a few days in the hospital where he was treated for bronchitis. Scientists say artificial intelligence helped them develop a new antibiotic to fight a dangerous type of drug-resistant bacteria. This new antibiotic controlled the growth of a deadly superbug often found in hospitals and other healthcare facilities. They used AI technology to sort through thousands of potential compounds to locate the few with the most promise, which significantly cut testing time. Once they developed this new antibiotic, they found it attacked the superbug on lab mice while not killing beneficial bacteria in the gut or in the skin. There's no word on when human trials will take place. This next story is pretty inspiring. A man who was told he would never walk again after a motorcycle crash is now back on his feet thanks to an experimental implant that he has in his spine and his brain. Herkin Oscam was paralyzed, unable to take a single step after his spinal cord injury more than a decade ago. Now technology is turning Oscam's thoughts into actions. Electrodes implanted over his brain collect the signals from the region that controls movement. And then a computer analyzes them to predict how he wants to move, then sends the messages to electrodes in his spinal cord. And that allows him to make these movements.
when I was there just for the first day when we were pre-programming the, the stimulator with the brain implant, I thought that he would only execute slight movements at the very beginning, but he was so fast that the very first day we asked him to stand up and to do a few steps and it worked. And all the team G was not here, unfortunately. He thought it would happen later. And uh, so we were all in tears. Don't you love it when that happens? Better than expected. He was the first participant in a clinical trial for this technology. Researchers are hopeful about the future possibilities of this. If you plan on going somewhere and you haven't filled up your tank yet, you can expect to pay a bit more at the pump. Gas prices almost always tick up in the days ahead of a Memorial Day holiday, but this year things aren't that bad. According to AAA, the national average for a gallon of gas is only up four cents from last week. That's because even though demand is up, oil is still trading in the low 70s per barrel. All this is Memorial Day road trips are expected to be up 6 percent from 2022. Let's take a look outside with live cam. We uh, are still watching a storm system to our north, but I don't even think this one's going to shave us or clip us as the one yesterday did. Yep, this one looks to be taking more of an easterly track, so it does look to stay north of our area. I think for the most part throughout the remainder of this Friday, it's going to be pretty quiet here in San Antonio and surrounding areas, but still a bit warm as we head into the afternoon. Highs are headed for the upper 80s. Let's get you a look at those current conditions outside right now. Yes, we do have some clouds in place, still a few peaks of sunshine. I think for the most part, that's going to be the, the, be the theme as we head into the next few hours. 80 degrees right now feels like 82, a dew point of 66, which is how we measure the moisture in the low levels of the atmosphere. Humidity not overly oppressive per se, but it is noticeable. And that also is going to be the trend over the next few days here in town. I did mention upper 80s in store later this afternoon. And then if you're stepping out for any of those evening plans, around 85 degrees by 6 p.m. and then falling into the low 80s and eventually into the upper 70s later tonight. For the most part, tomorrow and into Sunday here in town, not a whole lot of issues when it comes to rain. I think tomorrow evening in our far western counties, we may need to monitor for a few pop up isolated showers. We'll introduce that 20% potential into the back half of the weekend. And then as we head into Memorial Day on Monday, that's when that next disturbance moves through and some hit or miss storms, not for everybody, but some passing scattered storms, certainly possible. And then those isolated chances continue each day for the most part to behind that. So we'll get you another full look at future cast to get you all the details, what we can expect in the days ahead coming up in just a bit. Thank you, Mia. A local high school graduate is not letting anything get in the way of her dreams. How the athlete plans to compete at the Olympic level.